Hi everybody, this is Ellie. Thanks so much for joining me today for a video where I am going to swatch my entire washi tape collection. I have wanted to film this video for some time now, but it's been a little bit daunting. I think I figured out how I'm going to do it and hopefully you guys enjoy seeing the washi tape that I've collected over the past three or four years now. Washi tape is one of the first things I was drawn to in the planner community and I think it's because there are so many options. It's beautiful, it's like little rolls of art in themselves and it's relatively inexpensive. So when I first found out about washi, I bought a lot and I have since realized what my style is and what I will actually use in my pages. So I've tried to curate my collection more and more. I still have a lot. And I suspect that at the end of this swatching, I will have a better idea of if there's any that don't fit my style and can be gifted away, which is what I usually do. My mom and I are both educators, so if I don't have a Happy Mail friend that I think will use them, I'll take them into the classrooms and the kids have a ton of fun with them. And speaking of my mom, first of all, she's the one who instilled in me a love of pens and notebooks and all things stationary. And she gave me this for Christmas last year or was it two years ago and it's just the sweetest she found it herself and ordered it herself and I just love that so much and again this is so sweet and it's one of those things where it's just lovely to feel seen by your family so I already have a swatch book going and this is pretty haphazard and the way that I'm going to do it today is I have another insert that'll go in here. I think this is personal size, I'm not even sure, but it came with a number of inserts. So I am going to swatch them mostly by color. I had trouble figuring out the best way to do this, but for me, if you follow any of my setups, you know I tend to kind of have color palettes for a month. I've also sorted them before by maker, but right now this is what's working for me. So this video will likely be mostly voiceover and some music and I'll probably pop back on to chat a bit at the end. I'm going to swatch the washies and I will label them with a key. So let me just hold this up for you here if you're interested. I'll try and keep it somewhere on screen but I will also link these shops in the description and that way it'll save me from having to write them out over and over in long form. I'm going to share in a moment with you guys how I store my washi collection. I have tried the acrylic drawers that I'm sure you've seen many people use and those are wonderful. I still have a couple of sets, but first off, I outgrew them. But more importantly, I like to plan kind of all over the house or outside and I really like to be able to take my washi tapes with me. I do have a small pouch that I use for my monthly palette. But if I'm journaling and just want to see everything, the container from Michael's that I'm about to show you has been really, really helpful. Okay, let's dive into my washi collection. This is where I keep my washi tapes. This is called the Washi Tape Storage Keeper by Simply Tidy. And I got mine at Michael's Canada about a year or maybe two years ago now. This case is pretty sturdy and I love that it has a handle. It lets me tote it around like my own little washi suitcase. It has four divided trays that stack on top of each other two by two. And the divided sections are the perfect size for washi tape. As you can see, you can remove all four trays, which I find helpful if I just want to use a certain section. And there are three compartments at the front that are built in and I use that to hold extra washi cards as well as some holiday themed washi samples. I keep the rest of my washi samples in this Midori pouch, which is a great size. I won't be swatching my samples today, but this is where I keep them so that they're easy to access. I also have this Cubics pouch, which is where I keep my washi that I've selected for my monthly palette. Right now, it's just holding some washi that I have doubles of or that I will be destashing. So this is my entire washi collection and how I store it, and I find this to be very functional for me. My original plan was to let some music play while I swatch the washi tape, but then I realized that this was a chance for me to chat with people who would fully understand and appreciate my love for washi, 
So I am going to go ahead and talk throughout this. Feel free to turn the volume down and play your own music. You won't really miss anything. I do my best to label every washi tape. If it's not labeled, it's because I don't remember where it's from or it's from Etsy or Amazon, but with no specific maker. Like I mentioned earlier, I decided to organize and swatch my washi tape by color. So I'm going by a very loose Roy G. Biv structure. I'm starting out with reds and including pinks in that because I don't really have any reds. Maybe that top tape would be considered red, but I don't usually gravitate towards really bright or dark or saturated colors for washi tape. I've learned that I do prefer the lighter colors with a bonus if it has a transparent background. I wouldn't consider myself a large fan of the color pink, but I do have quite a few pink washi tapes. Some are what I would consider a true kind of bubblegum pink and some lean more towards coral, but I do really like pink in my washi tapes, so it's nice to see them all swatched out. This insert is blank with cream colored paper. And if I had my choice of any swatch book, it would probably have white paper and dock grid. Dock grid so that I could line the washi tapes up straight. And the white paper just helps the washi's true color shine because almost all the washi tapes are a little bit transparent. But this is the insert I had and it works perfectly fine, even though there are some slightly wonky swatches throughout. I'm using a palette knife here to tear the washi tape edges. I got this tip from Cindy Contarbaldo a couple of years ago and it works really well for me. I'll use either the palette knife or a metal ruler for these larger tapes and I just like having that clean edge. I considered just ripping it because I thought it might be faster but doing it this way was easier for me probably because this is how I usually do it. And I'm not precious about it. If a tape had a ripped edge to start with, I just left it because I couldn't be bothered to trim it. Oh, I just love this washi tape, guys. This is a soot sprite washi tape from Raspberry Designs, and I had emailed Grace because it was sold out on her site, but I love Studio Ghibli. I love the soot sprites, and the colors of this tape were just so, so pretty. And she found a couple, and she was kind enough to gift it to me along with that Kiki's Delivery Service one on the left-hand side of the page. It has the pink flowers and the envelopes. It was just so, so kind, and I just think those soot sprites are adorable. So one thing that I have learned is that not all washi is created equal, and that washi doesn't last forever. Some of them I had a little bit of trouble tearing, so you'll see. I just started off with the scissors there, and then I can rip it. I did that a bunch of times throughout this, but I just edited it out because you don't need to see that every time. But washi does become tackier, I think, after a period of time. At least that's my experience with it. So whenever I'm tempted to hoard washi, I remember that it won't last forever and that I've bought it to use it. As much as I want to save it and admire it, I can admire it on my pages. That's what I tell myself anyways, because sometimes the temptation to hoard or to save it for that perfect moment, even though most of them have, what is it, 10 meters on it, is, is strong. But doing swatches like this actually helps because it's like making that first mark on a blank journal, you know? It's always the hardest is to do that first mark. Well, this is like that first tear, and then I feel like it's ready for action. We're getting into more of the neutral pinks now, and you will see as we go throughout this swatch book, this is not a study in color theory or anything. Some of them, I wasn't sure where exactly they belonged, so I just went with my gut. It was hard because at first, sorting it and deciding how to organize it was honestly the hardest part of setting up for this video because I felt like it needed to be perfect, which I mean, is not, a thing here in this context that doesn't even exist but that's sometimes what I tell myself and then it just gets really hard to move forward because I want to make the right decision anyways I reminded myself there is no right decision this is ultimately for me to reference so I just did it in the way that makes the most sense to me right now and it will continue to grow and evolve I'm sure I really like these more neutral pinks and the washi with the transparent backgrounds here 
I find that they go really nicely with a lot of my brown neutrals and these are the colors I tend to gravitate towards the most. I'm just finishing up here with this last grid washi tape. It has, I think it's called a dark coral grid on it. And again, really nice, goes with a ton of colors that I have. And then I'm using a uni jet stream pen just to write the initials for my bullet journal key. Oh, I just added sweet freckled designs there. So I decided when I was done with a color, I would just start fresh on a new page or a new spread in some cases. So we flip the page over here for orange and yellow. I don't have a ton of orange or bright orange washi tapes, I would say. That one at the top is kind of a watercolor plopping. That's an Allie Brown washi tape. So if you're familiar with her style, it's in shades of orange and then a couple from Happy Dea. But a lot of my yellow tones that I like gravitate towards a deeper or golden yellow. So when I see these two pages facing each other, it just looks like this lovely warm palette. I signed up for two of Happy Dea's subscriptions this year. And for each subscription, I signed up to two kits. So I ended up getting four kits, two themes. And the way her subscription works is if you sign up for multiple kits within one subscription, you get additional washi tape. So almost all of my washi tapes from Happy Daya came in subscription kits. Now, I usually don't do subscription kits, especially for washi tape, because I am pretty selective about what I like, but I was able to see the washi's offered ahead of time and knew that I would like and use most of them. So I'm happy that I did it. Her kits come with a lot of stickers. I think they're good value for the cost, but I only did the two months because it was so many stickers that it's going to take me some time to use them. I am also surprised by how much I am loving yellow right now. I am a huge fan of Audrey Okea and she makes some of my favorite washi tapes in here. That top one with the bread and the third one down with the sunflowers are both hers. And she just has this combination of whimsy and coziness that I am really drawn to. In these washi tapes, I couldn't decide, are they orange, are they yellow, are they neutral? I mean, I think they would fit on any of those pages, so I chose to put them between orange and yellow, and I think they fit just fine there. This ends up being one of my favorite spreads in the entire swatch book. Look at all those warm, warm colors. And we're moving on to our second tray. You can see I don't have each tray filled up completely. It just depends on how it was sorted and I don't have enough washi tape to fill up every tray, which I'm glad about. It's nice to have the space, but in the end, I am still aiming towards a more curated collection. And it has nothing to do with the number of washi tapes itself. It just has to do with only keeping washi tapes that I know I really, really love and will use regularly enough. Now we're in the green pages. Green is my favorite color in general, and I do have quite a few shades of it here in washi tape. My favorite shade of green is more of an olive. If you've seen my Mansoura Atelier Olive Grace cover, that is one of the most beautiful shades of green I've ever seen. However, if I'm wearing green, which I often like to do, I like it to be a more saturated, jewel-toned, and cool-toned green, so something like an emerald. It's funny how that works, but green in general just feels inviting to me. It can feel really soft and cozy and natural, or it can feel bright and fresh, and I'm here for both of those feelings. I love grid washi tape. It's one of my favorites. This is a newer one from Note and Wish, and I just love the color. I think it's called Matcha Picnic and the gingham pattern. Grids are just so, so versatile. This one below it is from Lauren Phelps Designs. I think if I had to choose a favorite washi tape or just one shop to buy washi from, it would be Note and Wish. Their style is just soft and cozy and nature-based, but also a little bit romantic feeling sometimes, and I have a lot of their washi tapes, and I love all of them. I actually bought doubles in a couple of their grid sets because I've used them so, so much. Usually, I try not to buy doubles of washi tape because 
I think I've only ever finished one roll of washi, which was a generic one from Etsy, and it was a transparent background and a light turquoise grid. I miss that washi. But normally, I never buy doubles because I know now that I just won't use them. However, for these particular Note & Wish washi tapes, I bought three extra grids. One of them I'm almost completely done, and the other two are thin brown grids that I know I will use a ton. So I feel okay about that decision. And when I'm tempted to buy multiples, I also remind myself that washi does not seem to last forever, so unless I can really see myself using it regularly, it's likely just not worth it. And let's turn the page on green. Now we're coming up to blue. This is a darker washi tape than I usually would keep. This came in a Note & Wish set with the Kintsugi washi tape, so you'll see that later. It's the, well, it looks like teacups. It's the pottery that has cracks in it that's been mended with gold. And I just love that idea and that practice and just that philosophy in general so, so much. So even though I don't use that dark blue washi tape very often, I haven't been able to part with it yet. I guess that's purely a, a sentimental attachment. I mean, it's beautiful. I can see that it's absolutely beautiful. It's just much darker than I typically use. Although now that I'm doing this voiceover, I did get a newer washi tape from Note & Wish that is clear with gold stars and moons and sparkles. And I wonder how that would look layered with that blue washi tape. Probably really, really pretty, but I don't know, I'm not really great at visualizing things, so I will have to try it on the page and report back. Now, this washi tape was from a meetup between Rowena at Sojourner and James Luke Burke in California, which I did not get to go to, unfortunately, but I do have the washi tape with James's art on it. And this cloud washi is another one that I love from Audrey Okea. Don't those clouds just look happy? <laughs> I'm not sure when, but at some point I seem to have switched to using this ruler almost exclusively. And what's really nice actually about using the ruler instead of the palette knife is that when it comes to lining things up down the page, because it has that longer edge, it just keeps things, I think, more even. Again, a lot of that is just user error. I have trouble keeping things straight without lines to help me. but. This works out just fine. Ooh, this is another very pretty washi tape that waves with the gold foiling. I got that off of Etsy. There wasn't a specific maker, but just beautiful. Blues to aquas, it kind of looks like to me. And then we are moving on to purple. If you haven't seen this washi tape before, this is a collaboration that Dakshina did with London Gifties. And I believe that Dakshina watercolored the background herself and designed the raindrop pattern. It came in a gold foil and a holographic foil, and I got the hollow foil because it will go with more of the other washi tapes that I have. I usually don't like to put down just one strip of washi tape. I think I like to do layering more often than not. Well, maybe that's not true. Sometimes I just do one strip. But in general, I like to layer. So. I'm always kind of in the background thinking about whether or not the washi tape that I want to purchase will go with washi tape that I already have. Now I have this washi tape from the Coffee Monsters Co, but this is a gradient and even though I lay it down here, I realize that I want to keep it for a later section. So. I just put it in front of me there and hope that I don't forget. And this Simply Gilded Washi came with a set. I put the other three in the pink section, but that one felt more gray mauve to me. And this last one here is from London Gifties. So not too many purples, but really enjoy the ones that I do have. After the individual rainbow colors, as I've thought of them, we move on to neutrals. So this is my third tray and we're starting with black. So these pages will be black to gray to white. I think there's only one actual white one, which was a mistake, but I'll show you that one when we get to it. 
Ooh, this constellation washi tape. This was a gift from Rowena for my birthday one year and it's beautiful and it is perforated. So I was just showing that there as a reminder to myself mostly. These black washi tapes I don't use too often. Again, they are too dark, but I do find it easier to use them when they're on the thinner side, to use darker colors in general when they're on the thinner side. Because although I like dark colors, to me it just makes the pages feel heavy, especially as I mentioned when I'm using a smaller journaling size where there's just not that much space overall. So while I do really like the classic look of white and black, I do prefer it to be much more minimal, kind of like the washi tapes that we're getting into now. And watching this one, I can see these aren't straight at all, but I didn't notice it at the time. And oh, this washi tape, I'm leaving it out like that to show those first couple of fingers were yellowed. And even the swatch that I laid on the page that first bit is yellow as well, so that's just another way that washi tape ages. And when I mentioned earlier that washi tape can become tacky, in my experience, the adhesive becomes, well, tackier, and then because of the way it's rolled up on itself, that can transfer to the top or the art side of the washi tape as well. So it's stuck to your page, but it just has this little bit of tackiness on the top when it's sitting on your page as well. So it's not ideal and it hasn't happened to all of my older washi tapes, but it has happened to a number of them. So just something to be aware of. On this spread, there are a couple of minimal florals that I love. On the bottom left-hand page is a floral tape by Planner Monkey Co. And on the top right is a tape by Sweet Freckled Designs. I just love how minimal they are. Oh, and this tape here, that is the one that is nearly out from Note & Wish, and I do have a backup of it. Now we have some washi from the Coffee Monsters Co. coming up. This first one has a great background and is kind of a work, study, stress theme, at least that's how I use it. This next one is new and it is happy emojis on a white background. And the third one is a thin vertical washi tape that has a number of different tiny emoji faces. All of Helen's washi tapes are adorable. I think these three will be my most used simply because they're the most neutral and they'll go with almost all of the other colors of washi tapes that I have. Now we're coming up on some of the lightest washi tapes that I have. This one's not too bad. It's an empty washi with a silver metallic grid. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and label all these for you guys. And this next one is actually another of my favorite grids. This is by Surprise, Note and & Wish, and so is the next one. This one actually has, I think, what was called a moss green grid, but it was really hard to tell that it was green, so I just put it in this section with the neutrals. These next two, I think I actually should have put on the brown pages, but I didn't realize until after I had already put them down and labeled, so I just left them. But in general, in my mind, the black, white, and gray kind of goes with the silver foiled washies, and the brown goes with the gold foiled washies. Uh, and here is my white on white empty washi tape. So it has white circles on a transparent background and I have no idea why I bought this one, but I do use it strictly as masking tape. So it's not all bad. And now we come to my favorite spread, which is the brown neutrals. I'm not sure what it is about brown guys. I think it has to do with a kind of vintage, cozy, romantic and natural feel. I feel like these tapes, the patterns on them, the shades of brown kind of cover that spectrum and they just feel ultimately really warm and inviting to me and that is my favorite vibe or feeling I want to get when I flip through my journal pages. In all this chatting about my washi tape collection, I haven't actually shared where I use them and for the most part it's in my journal. 
I do use it sometimes in my planner, but whenever I do, it's just a small swatch because it is mostly filled up with writing and small icon and character stickers. But in my journal is where I really like to play around. I usually like to lay it on the edges of the page, whether that is the bottom or top or vertically along the sides. And I just like to play around with layering and choosing pens or brush pens that kind of bring the colors and the mood together. Those two thin washi tapes at the top of the right page are the other two Note & Wish washies that I have doubles of. I have found those to be so, so versatile, so I'm glad I was able to pick up another set when they were on sale. I'm putting in some more grids here. These are also both from Note & Wish, and I just love all of those tones together. This one is an old empty washi tape. I don't use it too much anymore. It is thick, but it is still nice to use in smaller pieces and also on envelopes if I'm sending happy mail. This is another Audrey Okea washi tape coming up. I love these daisies on the brown background. This is kind of an inverse where we have the brown background and the white flowers, but I like that too. A few more brown washi tapes will fit on this page. This one is from MT and it looks a little bit busy in this spread, but I think it's just because it has more colors than the other ones. This is from Planner Monkey Co. It is a Harry Potter themed washi tape. And this last one is from Audrey Okea. I've never actually used this one. I think it's because I got it early this year and it really feels like fall or Halloween time to me. So I will look forward to using that in October and probably November too. This is the MT washi tape with branches. I love the idea of this one, but now that I'm reflecting on it, I haven't used it nearly as much as I expected to. So that's something to consider. If I don't use it this fall and winter, then I'll know it's time to move on. That second one is by Raspberry Designs, and I love that it has a grid and then kind of some color swatches and botanicals drawn on top of it. That third washi tape, the Terrazzo one, I cannot recall where it is from. I believe it's from a Canadian maker and I tried to look it up before doing the voiceover, but couldn't figure it out. I'll try and look again and see if I can put it up on the screen. So I bought this giant washi tape at the same time as I bought the white dots on the transparent background. And I think what happened is I was new to the community and I went to Desserts, which is an art store here and they had some empty washi, so I bought it without really knowing how or when I was going to use it. So that large washi tape, I really only ever use for Happy Mail, but it is great for that because, well, it's so thick, it folds right around the edges of the envelope and helps make it really secure. Ooh, this is a new tape and it's beautiful. It's from Note & Wish and it has gold foiling, it's stars and sparkles and moons, and it doesn't tear, it's not a washi tape. It feels kind of like a scotch tape, but it peels really nicely, as nicely as a washi tape. So I'm not sure what magic that is, but it's beautiful and that's the tape I'm thinking might look really nicely layered with the dark blue and gold washi tape. And now that we're done our neutrals, we are on our fourth and final tray. So this category is what I consider my rainbow washi tapes. These didn't have just one color, they had too many to categorize, so I decided they deserved their own category. This first washi tape is by Allie Brown and has some more of her gorgeous watercolor plopping effect. I don't even get all the colors on both pages here, but I have enough to get a good idea. Same with the Coffee Monsters Co. I'm going to stretch this one across both pages so you can see some of the beautiful gradient. As I've been swatching my washi tapes throughout this whole notebook, I haven't been focused on making sure an entire pattern is represented. So for example, every single color in that gradient or every single different emoji before the pattern starts repeating. I just want enough of the washi tape that I get a good idea of what is on it. This spread definitely contains the brightest washi tapes that I own. I don't typically gravitate towards bright colors, 
I've mentioned it a number of times, but I like things that are softer and more neutral. And in terms of colors, I usually go towards kind of warmer autumn-y colors or pastel colors. So these brights are fun, but I don't use them as often as my other washi tapes. This washi tape is starting to go a little bit tacky. It has a bunch of different arrows and I really like the idea of it, but I haven't used it a ton. So that's another one that I'm going to see how much I use in the next little while and consider destashing if I think someone would get more use out of it. Here is another washi tape that I adore. This is a Kintsugi washi tape from Note and Wish. I just stretched it out to show you, but I'm not sticking it all down because I don't want to waste any of those cups. But the pottery has the cracks in it and then it's filled in with gold foiling to mimic the effect of Kintsugi and it's just so clever and so beautiful. I'm finishing up here with some softer rainbow colors. So they are still multicolored, but you can see they are not nearly as bright as some of the washi tapes that are on the left hand spread. Those leaves, I debated if those would be considered seasonal, but I don't think so. I could use those at multiple times throughout the years. This is from London Gifties and it has raised foiling and a backing paper on it. So you just cut it and then peel and stick. These are great. Sometimes I cut out around the circle itself and use it to decorate a page or an envelope and it's just a beautiful effect. Flipping the page, we're moving over to some vertical washi tapes. So these first two are stamp washi tapes from Black Milk Project. They're not perforated, so you do need to cut them yourself or you can try and rip them. I, I've never done that, I always use scissors. But the first one is houses and the second one is girls. And they're both beautiful. These have a lot of those kind of deeper, more autumn and natural colors that I love. I bought these at Paper Plus Cloth. I actually bought this next washi at Paper Plus Cloth too, although that was a year or two ago and it's by Liang Fang. And it's just this beautiful watercolor, bear and art accessories. And I love all of those. That's the end of my rainbow or multicolor category. And now I'm moving on to holidays and or seasonal. So this first spread I'm doing is Christmas and winter. These first four tapes, I'm not sure where they're from, but I believe that they were a recollection set from Michaels from years ago. I couldn't find them though, so I didn't label them that way. These are all beautiful colors. I like the really dark green and the kind of burgundy. I also have a washi sample card with a lot of Christmas washi tape that Robin at Talks From The Heart sent me a few years ago. So I'm looking forward to using all of these around the holidays. This one here is lovely. It's foiled and it reminds me of the garland that we put up around Christmas. And when Helen at the Coffee Monsters Co. did her first advent, I subscribed and I got a number of these washi tapes in that bundle. I'm not sure if I'll be doing an advent subscription this year. I haven't seen too many advertised yet. Last year I did one through Sticky Club and it was super cute and I think it was good value for the money as well but I just simply don't need that many sticker sheets right now. I still have a lot that I've only used one or two stickers from from the last advent calendar. So I will keep an eye out, but I do try to make sure that subscriptions will have products that I will really use because although it is so much fun to have them all beautifully packaged and to open them one at a time, I always wait and open it on the designated day because I don't know, I'm a rule follower like that, I guess, and I just find it fun to stretch it out. But yes, if I do subscribe to any, I will try to be very, very intentional. And now that we've done winter, I will flip the page and do fall. I only have a couple of washi tapes for this page. These are some of the fall critters from the Coffee Monsters Co. I think these are the first version, although I'm not 100% sure. And then this one, this came from an Amazon set, I believe, and I just love the colors of those leaves and the gold foiling. And this one is from Simply Gilded and it is a soft pink pumpkin theme. So 
That is it for fall washi tapes, but they're all foiled and lovely. While we're on seasonal, I'm going to show you some date washi tapes. So this one came from Jet Pens. It was two rolls to cover the days one through 31 and was perforated. This was a gift. They are also perforated and came with the days of the week here. Those are all beautiful. These were also a gift, also perforated. I use these a lot more when I was bullet journaling, but I think I'd like to use them in my journal again to help with the dates. And this is just some loose extras. So a couple of kind of special holiday sheets and then one with the months. Now to finish off, I have a couple of boxes where I keep my super thin washi tape because it tends to roll around and get lost. At first I thought I would do a spread with these all together, but then I figured it made more sense to just go through and add them where they belonged. So that first one was some fall leaves. I added it to fall. A couple here that will go in the rainbow category. And these washi tapes are all from Etsy, so none of them have specific makers. This little banner one is fun for any celebrations. And I really like these thin washi tapes. I find that they layer really nicely and they're pretty unobtrusive. The only thing is that most of these aren't the best quality from what I've found. They're not the stickiest and they always seem to peel up a little bit at the edges. So we'll see. I've gotten rid of a lot of them. These two browns came in a set that had a ton of colors. So I just gifted those away and took them into the classroom and just kept the ones that I would actually use. I have a couple of these celestial or moon and star ones. The first was a deeper yellow that I just put with the neutrals. And this one is a silver foil. It's so tiny, you can barely see it. What else am I looking at? Oh, I have these clouds. I like these clouds. There's blue and then there's a little silver foiled cloud in there as well. One of the other things I really like about most of these really thin tapes is that the majority have a transparent background, which you know I love. This one has some little blue flowers and berries. This is some nice greenery. I considered putting that with Christmas because it kind of feels Christmassy to me or wintry at least, but I think I could use that at multiple times during the year. Just a plain yellow. I kept just a couple of really plain ones that I thought I could use as dividers in my spread if I ever needed to. That one has kind of some soft orange and I believe gray circles. And this little hearts one, this must have been one of the first ones that I ever got. I realized that second part of the page is too neutral pink, so I tried to put it here where it went more with red. That's one of my actual red washi tapes, I guess. And then the gray that I had forgotten, I'm just going to squeeze into the bottom of the page there. And that is it. All of my washi swatched. Now I have this insert and it's covered with kind of a thicker craft paper and I know I have some washi tape finals so I grab three, two from Planner Monkey Co. and one from the Coffee Monsters Co. My initial plan is just to choose one to stick on but it just feels really really plain. So I decide on the Coffee Monsters Co. vinyl and I know I'd like to stick it in the bottom right corner. First, I'm trying all of the other ones, but yes, that is the one I've decided on. Then I figure, why not try to give this insert a title? So I've grabbed a white Posca pen, and guys, this was totally spontaneous. I didn't plan anything or kind of give myself a layout. I just went for it, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I love that. I just decided to thicken up the downstrokes a little bit there to give it a little more pop off the page. I like how clean this pen looks on the craft paper. So I'm thinking it doesn't quite feel complete yet and I think I'd like to write washi collection. So I've grabbed now the black Posca paint pen and I think I'd just been swatching for so long at this point I wasn't worried about anything because usually I would think this through a little bit more but it worked out. I did an oval, but then I tried to do a little bit more of a rectangular shape with kind of those gentle rounded corners, and I actually really like that. 
So I'm going to peel and stick here. Feels really satisfying to use my vinyls. As you might've seen, I have quite a few saved up there. And it's not just that they're saved, I don't really have a place to use them. So there they are. But I'm outlining the word washi with my Pilot multi-ball pen just to give it a little bit of pop and to tie it in with that black box. I grab a jelly roll, I think it's the 0 0.8 to write collection. And it's not centered, so I draw a little heart and I love it. And here is my completed washi swatch book. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I didn't plan to do any of this. I knew I wanted to use a sticker, but you can see it's not perfect. I just love the craft paper with the black and white that always feels really clean and also kind of sketchy to me. It was really lovely going through my washi tapes. It was also kind of a mindful practice for me, just sitting and swatching. I had folklore on in the background and it was really just a lovely way to spend an afternoon. Looking at my washi tapes, I know now that I definitely prefer washi that has a transparent background. Anything else feels really heavy on the page. Like this is beautiful, but I very rarely use it because of the very dark background. I also tend to stay away from really thick washi tapes. I have a couple in here somewhere, but the thick ones are lovely, but because I journal in an A6 size, if I use this washi tape, it, it takes up, feels like a quarter of the page at least. So I use these sparingly, and a lot of times I actually use the thick tapes for decorating envelopes if I'm sending happy mail. If I have a favorite page in here, it would definitely be the browns. I am just in the love with the neutrals. And if I had to choose a favorite washi tape shop right now, it would be Note and Wish. I just love their neutrals and their botanicals, and it seems to always have a place in my style. I don't know if you noticed, but I feel like my style kind of has two main components that don't go together at all, but I like these kind of neutral, natural, kind of nature botanical based elements and then i also really like some of the kawaii like the coffee monsters co happy day style so i just work with it i obviously have a lot of both in my collection and i use them whenever i'm in the mood so it was really fun to go through this is what i consider my rainbow pages here even looking at this these colors here are a little bit bright for me. I do definitely prefer these softer tones here, but these are still in my collection. I'll see if I use them in the near future, and if not, I will consider de-stashing them. I do really, really like everything that is in my collection right now, and I love a good number of it. So that is good. You can see I have a lot of pages left here. And I just kind of flipped over when I moved to a new color. So left some space and I will just fill it up as necessary. Although hopefully not too much. I would actually ideally like to downsize my collection and just be really intentional about what I add to it. But you know, those are famous last words because there are always so many gorgeous collections. So I am going to keep this in this cover. I don't know if I want to keep both in here. This one's just, it's haphazard. I mean, I did actually go when I started by shop a little bit, and I have some washi in here that I have since gotten rid of. Oh, I also keep, this is the notebook I keep these parts in. You know what? I will keep them together. So this is strung. <laughs> the strings are in here in a different way. It's going to be probably a little bit tight with both, but see it goes, this string is also connected to this string. So I haven't been brave enough to restring it yet. I think this needs to be longer, but I also don't have brown string. So let me see, it came with a jump band and let me see if that'll work. Oh, that's 
that's a lovely fit. This might be a little bit tight. You no, know, that's not too bad at all. Oh, this just makes me smile so much, guys. Okay, so I will do one last flip just of this front one. The back one just has doubles. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. And if you have any favorite washi shops, feel free to leave them in the comments. Although I clearly don't need any more temptation. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.